Hey everyone, it's Justin. Thank you for watching and welcome to my house. That's Justin's house in this video. I'm back in App Engine Studio and I have something that I read in the release notes and didn't really register exactly what it was, but now my mind is blown. And my mind is blown is because I run across this particular situation on my job every day, it seems like, at least once a week, um, at least with one out of every three customer interactions, and that is other departments who need a way to manage service requests and any workflows, notifications, approvals, decisions associated with that and get out of spreadsheets and email. So with Utah, App Engine Studio has a new template for service request management, which you can see right there on the screen. Service request management, allowing a broad range of internal services by building apps with the service request management template apps built using the template can support to, to organization scales of all sizes easy administration using targeted management consoles and supports one or more multiple services per application and you may be like justin come on why are you getting so excited about this it literally is something that we have to build from scratch every single time when it's not an IT department and it's not something ServiceNow has thought of in some of their solutions. So I'm in App Engine Studio right now and I'm gonna click on templates here at the very top. See, I've got a templates button. That templates button is gonna take me to the different templates that are available. Now, before Utah, I remember there being like this time off template, document approval. I don't know if all of these were here, but what wasn't here was this service request management. In fact, I'm in my PDI and I had to go install this template using the system applications menu, all applications, and I go ahead and install it. It was there ready to go and installed pretty quickly. And once I opened it up and looked at the details, now you can go to the documentation site and look at the details, but I want to see it in my instance. So I then went down here. So it comes with a table that stores the details of the request. It also comes with a table that stores the tasks for fulfillers allows them to resolve the service request, right? So think about that old service request and catalog task model. That's what they've rebuilt here in this particular template. It also has an example travel request table created by extending this table over here, uh, the primary table, and adding the details it needs for a travel request. So they're giving you an example of, hey, go extend this table in order to create a travel request and look how we did it, okay? That's pretty cool. Um, but we want to see everything else. We've got a decision table for approvers or default approval and approver assignment group. We've got a decision table for the default fulfiller user and fulfiller assignment group for each service that's part of this application. A flow, which could be is a series of workflows that automate the approval and fulfiller process, right? So having all that managed. A workspace built into the application. Like we don't have to go build the workspace anymore. That was a bad outline there. Let's try that again with my rectangle instead of my uh, there. All three of these. Workspace experience for allows fulfillers manager to view the fulfillers task helps the approvers view and manage their approval request and helps the fulfillers view and manage their work. So three different workspace experiences, two record producers, record producers, if you remember, these sit on the service portal so that people who are making the request have something to submit since it's not a catalog item, it's a record in an application. We need record producers to go do that. And then last but not least, we've got the different roles that we need app admin, fulfillers manager, requester, fulfiller role, and the approver role, okay? So this is a template. What does that mean? That means, hey, I can come in here and I can use this template to get started on my app. All right, so let's do it together. Demo for YouTube, and we're gonna describe this as awesome service that you will want every day, right? Who doesn't want that? Sounds like ice cream. Uh, so it's going to create the app. It may take a few minutes. I'll be quiet and maybe I'll cut out how long we have to wait and show you how long it was. Okay, everyone, I'm back. It did not take that long. Yes, it took a few minutes, but compared to what I would take me to build all that stuff that I just showed you, that did not take long at all. I got to give my dog a treat. I got to write down my workout for tomorrow morning, and now I'm ready for that. And look at what happened and the amount of time it took me to do those two things. I'll put on the screen how long I actually waited, but it really wasn't that bad. Data tables. There's my fulfiller task. There's my travel request. There's my primary table. If I want to go in to my primary table, 
I can take a look at it. I can go edit it like I would in App Engine Studio, add a field, change something, delete a field that I don't want. Um, and then if I wanted to extend that table, I would just hit the add table that was back on the previous screen. I'm trying to let this load up here for a second. There we go. So I've got all the table information that I can go and start adding and customizing, tailoring, configuring this app for what I need it. Um, if I needed to add a table, I can use that add table wizard and we can do create a blank table, um, create a data integration, and then follow all that stuff there. There's actually some cool features I want to get to there in a minute, but I'll talk to you about experience. So there's my form, record producer form for travel requests and the primary one. If I want to go in and change those forms, if I want to go in, hey, when child work notes are added, this has an email, but for my particular service or application, I want to change how that looks um, so I can go change how this is configured. Look at how fast all of this stuff is ready for me to start configuring and modifying for the particular group, team, department, or service that I'm configuring it for. Um, so I, I'm just going through the high level stuff here, but let's take a look. Data, three tables, experience, forms, record producers, workspaces, uh, workspace there. Uh, is there one more page? Yeah, there's one more page, another workspace. Remember we had three on that original screen. Logic and automation, email, email, flow, decision table, email, flow, email, decision table, email, email. You know how long it takes to configure all these when you're doing them one off by from scratch? Um, security, all those different roles that we saw earlier and including the d system roles for admin and SNC internal which is allowing them to get to the service portal. So that's how easy it is. I'm telling you, this is a game changer. If you are trying to roll out some kind of service management beyond IT, beyond your customer service base, but like internally within your organization, this request template is gold. This is really cool. I think you should take a look at it. This is with Utah. I'm in my PDI. I'm using early access or, uh, or yeah, early access, not general access. It's available in a couple of weeks. So take that with a grain of salt, but I'm sure this is just going to get better once general access or general availability is there. And that's it. That's the service request management template in App Engine Studio. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like, please subscribe, or share it with somebody who you think might be interested in getting started it easier automating and bringing efficiency to different workflows across their organization and for especially for people who are not in IT. Until next time, don't forget to always be learning.